Okay, sorry about that. We got picked out of the classroom. So um, I'm now uh, working on my laptop and you'll, you'll have to uh, bear with the, the decrease in my handwriting. But I was going to say, let's look at something like f of x is the square root of, of x squared times the natural logarithm of x. So what we see here, I mean, again, we see a bunch of things, but what we sort of primarily see is that we've got something inside of a power. And if we have it written like this, I mean, this looks like the chain rule, I hope. We've got this thing inside the parentheses. And then we've got this power function outside of the parentheses. And if we want to take the derivative of this, the chain rule says, okay, we should take the derivative of the outside power. So we should take the derivative of this power function. We should stick the inside function inside of it. But then we should multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And this inside function is a product, it's something times something, x squared times the natural logarithm. So when we take the derivative, we need to use the product. True. Take the derivative of the x squared, leave the natural log alone. Now take the derivative, now leave the x squared alone, sorry. And take the derivative of the natural log. And we could we could do a little simplification if we were um so inclined my uh my, my eraser tool seems to have vanished um but x squared times one over x is x and other than that, I mean, you could rewrite this negative one half as, you know, a square root in the denominator of a fraction. Um, sometimes I do think um, if you've ever checked your homework against the back of the book and you've sort of thought, well, I think I'm doing everything right, but my answer looks totally different from what's in the back of the book. I mean, that is just sort of something that happens sometimes when you do calculus problems. So this thing that I have written on this frame and let's see give me a second get that pen tool selected 
this and this are equivalent. There are two different ways of writing the same thing. So, I mean, I know it can be a little frustrating. I, I don't think there's any real solution, but sometimes you can do everything right and your answer still looks completely different from the textbook's answer. But uh, moving along, Let's do an example where you have to use the chain rule more than once. Um, let's take the derivative of the natural logarithm of the sine. of x squared plus x. So this is primarily a chain rule problem in the sense that when you look at this, what you see is a big composition. You've got an outside function, the natural log, and then you've got this other thing inside of the parentheses. So, according to the chain rule, we should start by taking the derivative of the outside function. and sticking the inside function inside of it. But then we need to multiply by the derivative of this inside function. So by the derivative of the sine of x squared plus x. And what happens when we take this derivative is that we're going to need to use the chain rule again. Because when we take the derivative of the sine of x squared plus x, we've got an outside and an inside function. So the derivative of the outside function is the cosine. The inside function gets stuck inside of it. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function. I think it's usually more readable to have parenthetical expressions in front of trig functions. So I'm going to rewrite that ever so slightly. You know, when you, when you multiply, order doesn't matter. I can write the 2x plus 1 first if I want to. And again, going back to, to what I was saying earlier, if you saw this in the textbook and, and you went to the back to check your work, it's likely that it would be written slightly differently. 
you know, when you multiply, where is that eraser tool? It's on my second monitor where I can't get to it with the touch screen. Um, you know, when you have a multiplication like this, you can think of this 2x plus 1 times the cosine as a fraction. You can think of it as sitting above a 1. And when you multiply fractions, you multiply numerators and denominators. So you can take that thing on the right, that 2x plus 1 times the cosine, and you can move it up into the numerator of the fraction. I, I think I might have said denominator a few minutes ago when I meant to say numerator. Um, in theory, I guess I could keep this up all day. I, I, I don't know that that most of you would want to watch uh, an eight-hour video of me. Maybe I should do an example with the quotient rule. May, or maybe, you know, what rule we haven't done anything with is the exponential rule. So let's combine that. Let's do an example where we need the exponential rule and the quotient rule. So the quotient rule, when we use it, it's it's going to turn messy. There is no helping that. So the quotient rule, let's remind ourselves, is the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom over the bottom squared. And the bottom squared I'll start with because it doesn't require any calculus. 1 plus x squared squared. Now this derivative of the top This derivative of this thing is going to require the chain rule. So the exponentials are kind of the exception in the sense that usually when you have a chain rule, you've got parentheses and and the inside function is literally inside the parentheses. I'm trying to use the keyboard, which is why my my handwriting is suddenly gone to pot. Sorry about that. But we do have an outside and an inside function. And according to the chain rule, we should take the derivative of the outside function. Well, the derivative of the exponential is the exponential. We should put the inside function inside of it. And then we should multiply by the derivative of the inside function. And the derivative of 5x is 5. So there is the derivative of the top. We should multiply it by the bottom. Minus. Now we should leave the top alone. And we should take the derivative of the bottom. 
the derivative of 1 plus x squared is 2x. And we put that all over 1 plus x squared squared. The denominator squared. And again, you know, if you're if you saw something like this in the textbook, the author and you were checking the answers, the author might write it a little differently. You can do some factoring because of this e to the 5x showing up in both these terms. But as far as the calculus goes, this is the answer. And all right. So I was asked to do a few examples um, where we're mixing different derivative rules. I hope that helps. Um, if you want to see more examples, you know, over the weekend when I'm not available, there's this website. Um, you might have seen this. I, I, it has a bunch of Creative Common videos, and I sometimes use it in my um modules mathispowerforyou.com. And if you click on Calc 1 and you like, you search for chain rule, for example, I mean, you can find a huge number of example videos by um, this website creator. Um, reviewing all of the derivative rules that we have covered. So I hope you found my, uh, my going through those problems helpful. But if you want yet more on the chain rule or yet more on the product rule or the quotient rule, there is um, this archive that you might find helpful as well. So just wanted to mention that if anybody's looking for more review material.